All right. Hey guys, Tony Maritato here, physical therapist. So I wanted to answer Jordan's question and I'm not sure I, I know exactly what you're asking. So I want to answer two questions that are real similar and very common. The first is the skin can get adhesed or tacked down to the tissues below it. The skin gets stuck. Yes, that will restrict range of motion. Yes, that will cause tightness and other complications. Um, but then the other part is the kneecap. So the kneecap has to be mobile within the patellar groove. It needs to be able to glide side to side, up and down. Both of them will restrict motion. So Jordan, I'm not sure which one you were talking about, but I'm going to answer both. So first, just a basic understanding of the anatomy. You have multiple layers of tissue kind of everywhere in our body, right? So our skin, it's the actual biggest organ of the body, but it covers everything. It protects us, keeps the outside stuff out and the inside stuff in, but it should be mobile. Like normal healthy tissue, when I roll around on it, um, there's some belief that it's a frictionless environment between the skin and the musculature below it. Below the skin, right? Like why does this have this little indentation? What's going on in there? Below the skin, there's connective tissue called fascia. Surrounding the musculature, there's connective tissue. Um, the muscles themselves would be called contractile tissue, but it's really all kind of the same stuff, just made up of different components. And then you've got your tendons, your ligaments, down to your bone. Your bone has a skin on it. So we've got all these layers, and in an ideal, normal, healthy tissue, those layers move. And within that, you have nerves and you have blood supply and other lymphatic vessels. Um, so let me pull up my knee, and let's see if I can get the camera down here. Okay, so talking about a knee for a moment. Now, obviously, I have not had a knee replacement. The best I can do is empathize with you. I've treated a good number of knee replacement uh, clients clients who have had knee replacements, I should say. But the idea is the skin should be nice and mobile, right? They slice the skin superficially, then internally they slice it on the other side. That scar tissue, when it first lays down, lays down in kind of a haphazard matrix. It's just scar tissue everywhere. Um, you can do scar tissue mobilization. I'm a huge fan of it. Usually what I tell my patients is, as soon as you can tolerate it, it could still be in the hospital. You don't put lotion on it because the idea is we need the skin to move. If I put lotion on my skin, I just slide over the skin. I can't move the skin. So I use a dry finger. There could still be bandages. There could still be staples or sutures or glue. But basically what I'm doing is I'm doing a cross fiber going horizontal to the incision and just keeping it mobile. Now, I'll tell you right now, the lower part of the knee is always the tightest. That's where all the swelling kind of comes in. Even in a non-surgical knee, there's just not a lot of mobility. Um, there's not a lot of space between the skin and the bone. So you, you're always going to be tightest at that lower part. And usually there's a little bit of numb patches either here or here. Everybody's a little different. If you're talking about the kneecap feeling stuck, that's a different situation. And I asked about extension because if you don't have full extension, like here I am flexed, even though I'm totally relaxed, the quad, everything is relaxed, my kneecap is not going to budge. There is no way because that little bit of 10, 12, even eight degrees of flexion is going to lock that kneecap in place. Now, if I prop my heel, let me see if I can make some room. Okay, so if I prop my heel up, now my kneecap is relaxed. I don't know if you're able to see that in the video, but my kneecap is gliding side to side. A solid quarter inch, maybe even a little bit more. Um, there's no pain, there's no discomfort, but I've got full extension. It's at least zero, maybe even a little bit of hyperextension, two or three extra degrees. That's what allows that kneecap to kind of float. I can move it up and down. And so certainly if you're doing your home mobilizations, part of what you should be doing is spending time gliding that kneecap left to right, gliding it up and down, just making sure it's mobile. But understand that even just a little bit of bend, that kneecap is, it's moving a little bit right now. Bend it a little more, it's locked.
It's not going anywhere. And I don't have swelling. I don't have scar tissue. I don't have anything. It's just the anatomy and the structure of the knee. So <laughs> while I agree, it's important, believe me, I tell all of my patients, do your patellar mobs, do your cross fiber massage, don't use lotion, let the skin glide across the incision. Uh, at the same time, I, I wouldn't get too hung up on um, thinking that you did something wrong or that somebody advised you incorrectly because they didn't tell you to do that stuff. Uh, I tend to think more, at least in Jordan's case, because you're limited in that end range extension, you're not getting to zero or greater than zero. That's probably a reason why the kneecap doesn't want to move side to side. But if it's a skin issue, if it's just the skin, I would say most of the restriction is probably coming from the residual swelling that's in there, right? If, if I have a balloon and I blow it full of air uh, as big as it'll go, th the balloon is really hard to, to kind of move around. The, the rubber is stretched as far as it'll go. If I let some air out of the balloon and then close it off again, I've got a lot more pliability within that rubber. That's kind of the way your skin is. So the more swelling, the less mobility, but that's okay. That's not a red flag. That's, there's not danger in that. Just understand. Now, I would be concerned if you had totally normal swelling, the size of your surgical knee was the same size as your non-surgical knee, you had full extension, and you still did not have mobility in the skin or mobility in the patella and the kneecap. Um, and certainly there are strategies like my favorite. I use a lot of suction cup strategies. You can get a really inexpensive uh, plastic suction cup on Amazon for like three bucks, five bucks. Uh, taping is fine. I'm not a huge fan of taping for the most part, but if somebody wanted to try it, I would never be against it. Uh, certainly there's things you'll hear soft tissue mobilization, which is done manually, which is great. You have strategies that you could use to do it yourself. There's instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization, Graston technique, things like that. But at the end of the day, nothing is going to move that tissue more effectively than you getting up and down from a chair, going upstairs, walking outside. But certainly if the pain is limiting all of those things, you do what you need to do. So I want to share this video. Hopefully that answers your question. If it's skin or if it's patella, there's reasons for both. But I think you're still within a normal kind of situation. You just keep working on it. If you have more specific questions, share them, post them. The better your questions and the more you send in, the better these videos will get and the more content I can produce to help people in the future. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys later. Thanks for being in the group.